If you would ask me to picture a role model, a true leader of this world, I'd probably say Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., or maybe Malala. What about you? Who pops up? We seem to have these grand ideas of what it means to be a leader, preconceived ideas really. Asking myself that question made me realize that I think a leader is someone that has the capabilities and confidence to speak up and guide the rest of the people, whether a group, a movement, or a country. For others, the work can be quite triggering. Imagining someone dominant and aggressive who's working top down with hard expectations and strict rules. And as we've already mentioned in this podcast, the Open Think Tank Network questions that idea of a top down structure, and that claim of being a flat organization draws many people in, like Pascal, for example. I think I don't particularly like that top down aspect in the sense of. Um, like really standing out so much from everybody else and I mean in in the extreme case really dictating people what to do it's just very opposite to my nature I think Pascal along with some other people were motivated to start a grassroots think tank in London so where does leadership actually fit into such a structure and is there even a place for it the concept is innovative um, I think it is more, it's closer to the way our generation works today. And very often it produces results which are, which have a surprise element in it, which have innovation in it, which, which are different than what you've seen before. Yeah, we will not be the only ones who get a surprise in this episode of Grasp. Um, it was, it was, um, how to put that in words. It's like when, when you lose the ground under your feet. So it's like, oh shit, what happened? This is Grasp, a podcast where we get to go behind the scenes of a think tank. My name is Jamila. I'm an intern at Voraus. And this summer, I've been talking to people of the Open Think Tank Network, trying to grasp some of the challenges and let's say creative ways in which people make change happen. In today's episode, The Unexpected Leader. So picture a packed pub in central London, where a group of students are having a beer. They're standing up, engaging in a discussion about politics and policy change. Rather than complaining how messed up the system is, they're curious, they have ideas, and they want to try something new. We just met and brought together our thoughts on on what to do with this new organization that we wanted to set up in London. They're curious to try the new grassroots think tank model which had already proved to be successful in Switzerland and in Germany. We were all like full of good ideas uh, and very enthusiastic. People around them would also engage spontaneously in the discussions and give their input in a true pub community kind of way. Listening to our conversations and saying, oh, I have an opinion on that one. And then maybe they joined for a couple of minutes and then they went away again. All viewpoints were welcome and it felt free and new. The group would meet every week at the same location, and each time the ideas would build on each other. It was very unorganized and very creative. Everybody came up with great ideas. Everybody thought, oh, actually, yeah, I know somebody who could help us out with that question. Um, we were all really bubbling with ideas, and, um, and every week some new people joined, some other people left again. The vibe was hopeful and engaged. I think it was really great to, to gather a lot of ideas but it was very difficult to put these ideas into practice in a second step. It started to become clear that even though there were loads of ideas, we went nowhere. And that vibrant passion gradually vanished into a more negative kind of vibe. It was a certain frustration uh, that was around because things weren't really moving. And when frustration takes root in a group dynamic, it can be hard to steer back to passion, especially when there's no clear structure or any concrete action. I think on the one hand, we realized that people became frustrated when they didn't turn up anymore. <laughs> that was a clear sign when that we had to, to change things. Um, and I think they uttered their frustrations as well in the meetings. I know, guys, we need to do something concrete now and we need to have people taking responsibility because 
we knew if we would continue that way around, more people would drop off. It would just be a nice bunch of people meeting over a drink and talking, but that is not what we wanted to do. At that point, I think we started to to have a think who could take on more responsibility, who could lead. It was a good bunch of motivated people. But as that question was asked, they all just fell silent. No one in the group felt really ready to take on that responsibility. The question would go around and around, and no one would pick it up or step in. Everybody was up for collaborating and co-creating, but they didn't really have a clear leader persona among them. No one who felt ready to just step up and be a leader. And Pascal himself felt it was too big of a shoe to fill. I mean, when, when we started with the Gora, I think at that point, I was in London maybe for one or two months. And I was just getting started with my masters and I had no idea what to expect or how much more to come. But I knew that a one year masters would be an extremely intensive experience, um, which is why I was amongst all the other people as well who really loved the idea, came up with good ideas, but had difficulties taking on more responsibility. He also had very clear reasons for why he wouldn't be a good fit. I think I don't particularly like that top-down aspect in the sense of um, like really standing out so much from everybody else. And I mean, in, in the extreme case, really dictating people what to do is just very opposite to my nature, I think. Yeah, Pascal is more that discreet guy who stays a bit in the background, but who comes with really nice input after everyone has been heard. And he's quite shy. For example, I mean, in, in every meeting when, when somebody comes up with a great idea um, and, and then it's up to me to say, yes, Luca, great idea. Um, can you do that until next week? It's like, uh... Yeah, that's Pascal's worst nightmare. Ordering people around is nothing that I like particularly doing. Weeks went by, and even more people stopped showing up. It felt like they had lost their initial momentum, and they weren't moving forward. But then somebody came up with the idea of breaking down that bigger, daunting project of leading the initiative forward to sharing the responsibility, meaning different people would commit to smaller tasks. Pascal agreed to look after one project, it was non-committal, like... Short-term projects. It's until next time we meet, um, this and that need to happen. The group knew this wasn't enough for a long-term solution, but it was a tiny step forward. Well, for now, at least. But then there was this email. From, I think it was Dennis, who CC'd a lot of four house people into the message, saying that I'm super happy to present Pascal, who will take on the leadership of the Gora Think Tank. Wait, what? Now I'm confused. So imagine Pascal's reaction. Um, it was, it was, um, how to put that in words. It's like when, when you lose the ground under your feet. So it's like, oh shit, what happened? And yeah, and it's, I don't know. I, I mean, I had two options. One option is to, to go forward and say, actually, no, 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 no misunderstanding. Um, or I could give it a try and, and move ahead. The option felt chilling for Pascal. But given that misunderstanding in the email, he kind of had to make a big decision around this. He had never thought of actually taking on the leadership position before. But now that it was given to him, he would have to officially reject it in front of his whole team and to all other players in the Open Think Tank network. So Pascal tried to challenge himself. I was playing with the thought of um, taking on that, that role, um, putting in more energy and uh, responsibility into a core think tank. It was still nothing I could imagine myself really doing. After going back and forth in his head, Pascal decided to talk to his colleague Laura about this mistake and her reaction was a bit unexpected because she encouraged him. Sure, take it on, just go for it. You can definitely do this. And that pep talk really helped Pascal. It took me maybe a day or so, like I slept over it. Um, another day where I just 
I had some intense discussions with Laura. After that, Pascal gathered his courage and was ready to answer that email. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go for it. Transitioning into being the leader wasn't super straightforward, especially for someone like Pascal. So he needed to find his own way to do it. You know, I didn't feel like just standing in front of everybody else and taking clear leadership and telling people how to do things. But I was just sitting around the table and Laura encouraged me to say, oh, Pascal, maybe you should come come here in front. <laughs> come and speak with every, speak to everybody. Um, put yourself forward. And that took a lot of time. So through this experience, has your image of leadership changed? There is not one understanding of leadership. Um, I think there are a lot of different ways to lead and... Agora Think Tank was a great platform to try different methods as well. Um, I mean, I, I didn't try them out very actively saying, well, on this day I'm going to go with method A and this day I'm going to go with method B. No, but just um, really how to, you can grow into something. And as the days and weeks went by, he grew further into his position and realized what he needs to do in order to keep everything going. Really be as collaborative and inviting as possible make it as participatory as possible, but still keep people together, organize things, um, make sure that people do what they promise to do and, uh, and make sure that things are moving forward. And how did he do that? I have a very gentle way uh, to nudge people <laughs> to get them going. So it's, I mean, all the time when I reach out to somebody and make sure that things work gets done um it is like oh by the way and how is everything else in your life uh because we are in the end like a big group of friends working together on a project so um it's always just a nice occasion as well to check in with other people being an intern in a grassroots organization does include taking on responsibilities so i am familiar with leading things forward but not in that all-encompassing way that Pascal has to do it as the president. So I was curious to ask him, what has been the hardest part of leading Agora Think Tank so far? I think really difficult moments are when things are not working as they should, when there is a lot of work invested, but it's not getting the, um, the acknowledgement that it should. So for example, at one point, so it's got a quite an easy example but our editorial board wasn't working and it was just a couple of people writing for a core think tank and their ideas just went nowhere because we were not able to to check it as we should our processes were not in order um, and we just lost people uh, and people just said well actually why do I help you if, if nothing comes out of it and I think yeah that, that was very stressful then brought down the mood of, of everybody else as well and I think it's in these moments they can be very, they can really drain your energy level, and and that it becomes really really um, difficult. After some time of doing, Pascal seems to have figured out his own killer combo for efficient leadership. You need to encourage people. You need to come up with new projects. Be constructive in your feedback. Think about why processes are not working, how to improve them, and. Uh, things uh, as soon as things start to to improve and work again the mood goes up again as well and then things become much easier but then at the end of the day a leader isn't that lonely top-down position so perhaps there's a way to step into leadership while still keeping that grassroots spirit i can i can always rely on on so many people within agora think tank um to to help me to manage other people to give me recommendations, um, tell me where to go, how to do something. So I think this is not an, like an, an, a unitary and isolated individual project. This is very much what we've achieved as a, as a group, as a, as a network. If you could travel back in time to Pascal, who was doubting his leadership skills, what advice would you give yourself? Looking back, um, I, I didn't know how much I would develop in that role. So if I would travel back in time, uh, I would give myself a recommendation. Just do it. Don't hesitate. <laughs> like your doubts take you down uh, and 
give it a go. You can only fail in the worst case. And next week on Grasp, we'll hear from a team who thought they had it all figured out. Now we, we brought that vision to the people. Now they have a clearer picture of what we are trying to establish here in Vienna. Well, until they didn't. You, you would be surprised of how many cool uh, websites there are where you can translate everything into Esperanto if you want to. More on that in the next episode of Grasp. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Grasp. This podcast was possible thanks to the generous support of the Larix Foundation. I'm Jamila, your host of this show. Tinka Media is the podcast production house behind this episode. Music came from Blue Dot Sessions. From Voraus, the project is overseen by Edu, our digital innovation manager. What are you grasping for right now? If you're out there in the world and you want to join the movement, get in touch with us. We look forward to hear from you. See you in the next episode.